Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I'm going to start off by reading a scripture, and this is from John chapter 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. By way of announcements this week, I would like to make sure you know that we will not be having any more Thursday meetings for the rest of this year. We'll begin them again in January 2023. If you do need me, if you want to talk, you're welcome to reach out. Uh, I'm not that hard to get a hold of. You can email me, info at cjccf.org, or you can reach out to me on social media, on Slack, if you are in the fellowship. And by the way, if you're in the fellowship and not on Slack, please do reach out to me so we can get you on there. And uh, yeah, any other way you have to reach out to me, you're, you're welcome to do so. If I'm busy with family and I can't answer, you can always leave a voicemail or a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I know that people are traveling and people are doing things with families over the holiday season and it does include myself. And for those that are not members and would like to become a member either of the Church of Jesus Christ or of the ecumenical movement, the Fellowship of Christ, you can go to the churchwebsite.org or cjccf.org and there's a button up at the top in the menu that says membership or join. Click on that, fill out the form, and we have people that will be reaching out to you to see how you would like to be involved. As for prayer requests, we have several people that are sick. And we, we need to pray for these brothers and sisters. We have people recovering from surgeries. We have people that are, well, a lot of people are suffering from spiritual PTSD. So please pray for the mental, physical, and spiritual welfare and health of all of the saints. Please don't forget to pray for those that are seeking, those that are learning more about the fellowship, those that are lost and looking for a home, that they will find us here. And Part of praying is action, so please be sure to share the gospel by your example and like, share, and like the channel, subscribe to the channel, so that we can help grow this movement. We're still very young, we're still in our infancy, and we're still looking for leaders, and we're also looking for our members so that we know where all these people are that are affiliating with us silently so that we can begin gathering in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, this is the Christmas season, so let's make sure we should always be praying for the actual homeless and those that are in poverty and those that are suffering around the world. And we should also be doing our part, uh, again, be giving donations to places, to people that, that need our help. That should be a year-round thing. It just seems to be a little easier for people to do it during the holiday season for some reason. So let's remember not only to pray, but also to do. If you'd like to take a moment now to say a prayer, sing a hymn, go ahead and pause the video, and we will continue as soon as you get back. We're now going to proceed with the Shema. For those who don't know, the Shema is Deuteronomy 6.4. This is a scripture and a prayer that the Lord has asked us to say. And that we, it's kind of a bit of an evolution. We had a moment of unity in our original services, our live services, that eventually became the Shema. And we continue this forward because it's something that anyone can participate no matter when you're watching the video. I'm going to read it first in English. I'm sorry. I'm going to read it first in Hebrew. And then I'm going to read it again in English or offer it in Hebrew and offer it in, in English. And if you would like to read or offer it back, there'll be a moment, you don't have to pause the video, there'll just be a moment where the video is extended in silence so that we can all stay the Shema together wherever we are to unite us in this fellowship of Christ. Shema Yisrael, Yevah Elohenu, Yevah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yevah is our Elohim, Yavah is unity.
This week's message and this week's Advent is the candle of joy. Whenever we think about the Christmas season, this holiday season, we think about joy. It's in our songs, our hymns, comfort and joy. We see it, the word on Christmas wrapping paper and other Christmas memorabilia all over the place. But what is joy? As a child, joy was receiving lots of presents, right? Couldn't wait to get. I was a kid during the 70s, so Star Wars was huge. I'll never forget the joy I felt when I got that huge Millennium Falcon. It was just so awesome. Have this giant spaceship to, to fly all my little characters around in. But over time, I got bored with Star Wars. Eventually, I got to a point to where we moved from the city to a farm, and I remember I loaded up my old toys. I had found it, this old, somewhat broken Millennium Falcon. And I know if you're a huge Star Wars fan, you're going to think this is incredibly blasphemous. But I put, I found an old Han Solo and Chewbacca, and uh, they, yeah, did not look very good. I put them in the cockpit, and I put some other guys in the back. And the way our barn worked was you had a hail off on one side, and then allowed you to climb down and climb up to a second hail off on the other side. And I would just toss that. Millennium Falcon over the other side to watch it crash and back and forth until it got to the point to where it was just so battered I couldn't do it anymore. And did that bring me joy? It was kind of fun, you know, to throw something back and forth. It was a little bit of something I wish I would have done as a kid but wasn't strong enough and also didn't want to break one of my favorite toys. But it, that joy was temporary, just like receiving the present receiving the gift on that Christmas morning. And I know we all have similar stories. Not, I'm sure, of throwing toys from you know, launching a spaceship from one hayloft to another, but of receiving something that we really, really wanted. But then once we receive it, the joy may be there for a little while, but it's not a permanent joy because it's just a superficial thing. And fads come and go. I still enjoy Star Wars to a point, but I, I don't have the great love for it that I had as a child. It's not that I outgrew it, it's just that I moved in another direction. How do we keep joy in our hearts? We can't keep bouncing from one thing to another. I remember I bounced from Star Wars to He-Man and from He-Man to Transformers. And these are things that I enjoy with my children now today. Several of my sons have gotten into Transformers. We've watched the modern version of the She-Ra cartoon. We enjoyed that. But again, these are, these are temporary things. Having a lot of sons, it's interesting. I see one of my sons outgrow Transformers, for example, and then another one picks them up. And so I just continue enjoying that with them. But what I'm really enjoying with them is the bonding moment between a father and his son. And even though it wasn't Transformers, my daughter and I have had the same experience with pop culture. We find things that we have in common and we share in them together. But I don't believe that the joy comes from the pop culture itself. I believe it comes from the bonding experience. It's that we have something that we like, you know, that's nice, but having someone to share it with, that's the true joy, the true gift this Christmas season. And I've talked about this before. I know that some of you are very adamantly against the idea that Jesus was born December 25th, and that's fine. Again, I'll say that for me, I will accept any opportunity I have to worship Jesus, to celebrate Jesus, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, because his whole life was dedicated to us. This was his bonding moment with his creation. So how, how do we find true comfort and true joy if we can't find it in the commercialism of Christmas? It's the one present that Santa Claus can't bring us. Well, I read earlier John 15, 11. I want to read to you the verses around it. I want to start in verse 9. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye, and ye means all of you, in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments 
and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I could keep reading. I could have started sooner. This is just a great chapter. It's a great lesson. But the core message here is that if we want to have joy, we have to have love. Look at the Advent candles as we've been presenting them. Hope, peace, love, and now joy. I think there's a message here. The first thing we have to have is hope in Jesus Christ. Without that hope, we can't really move forward. We can't move forward in doubt, is basically what I'm trying to say. And that hope brings us peace. And with that peace, we become the peacemakers as disciples of Jesus Christ, as his representatives. And then we have the candle of love. As we bring peace, we cannot help but be the embodiment of love as representatives of Jesus Christ. And sharing in all this love brings joy. So there is a method to this. There is a message behind each of these, not merely individually, but also adding them all up. And that is the joy of Jesus Christ. In the Latter-day Saint tradition that I was raised in, a very, very popular scripture is in 2 Nephi. In the RAV, it would be 115. And in the OPV, it would be 225. RAV is the Community of Christ tradition, and the OPV is the Salt Lake City Church's tradition, the Brighamites. And that scripture is, Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. I, I want to reread this, and I want to reread it in a modern way of saying it. Adam fell that mankind might be, and men and women are that they might have joy. I know that in the Old English, when you said men, it meant men and women, but I'd like to be a little bit more inclusive here. There's a couple things. One is that we fall. And because we fall, we have to find that hope, that peace, that love, to receive that joy. But without that fall, without that opposition in all things, we can't discover for ourselves what true joy is. Remember as a child, going somewhere far away, even if it's just school, and longing for home. That's how we are here. We have this deep longing because we came from God and we wish to return back to that God that created us. And the point of our existence is that we might have joy. The problem with the word might is that it also means that we might not have joy. We have a choice. It's completely up to us. Will we receive the hope, the peace, the love, and the joy of Jesus Christ this holiday season and always? If we want to have true joy, we can't have it with hate in our hearts. I believe that's why he says to keep his commandments, and his commandment is that we love one another. When you look, you can cherry pick Jesus' words all you want. But when I look at his teachings... I see, love each other, love your neighbors, love your enemies. He talks about dividing people with a sword, yes, but that division is those that will love one another and those that will not. What separates us is that we're willing as Christians to love all. We don't need to find excuses to hate each other or anyone else. When someone comes up and says, I'm your enemy, I hate you for these reasons, we say, I love you anyway. I accept you anyway. I can't even tell you how many people have told me, I don't accept you. You are an enemy. You are an apostate. You are the, the anti-everything that, that, we che- that we teach in whatever church it is. It isn't just the Salt Lake City Church. People from a lot of different churches have said this to me. And every time I say, I accept you and I love you as a fellow Christian, as a fellow Latter-day Saint. 
as a fellow human being. And a lot of people think I just say this because I'm trying to make them angry or mock them or ridicule them. I say it because I mean it. We have to stop fighting and that that ceasefire has to stop somewhere. And so I say, let it stop with us. Every December, sometimes starting in November, I start seeing posts all over social media and hearing things and in my news feed about this war against Christmas. And there is a war against Christmas. We have Christians demanding that everyone speak their language and join their churches and follow their rules and their guidelines. And that includes Christians that don't believe in Christmas. It, believe, it includes Christians that refuse to acknowledge our other traditions here in the United States, such as Hanukkah. Why can't we just love each other and have that joy in our hearts? Be happy that others have found joy somewhere and love them where they are. Now, I would be remiss if I did not, at this point, mention the joy of fatherhood. I was petrified of being a parent, really probably my whole life. I didn't think, and I still don't think, that I'm strong enough, that I'm good enough, that I'm worthy. But when you have a baby, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter whether you're any of those things. Because that baby's there. That's the way it was when Jesus was born. It didn't matter if Israel was ready or not. Jesus was there. It didn't matter if they thought they needed the Christ that they were given. But he came and he taught and he celebrated and he danced and he wept and he died. I cannot describe to you the joy that I felt when my daughter, my first child, was born. All of my fears, all of my anxieties went away as this little, little tiny hand grabbed my finger. She was cold and she was scared. But she recognized my voice. When Christine was pregnant, I used to put my head down to her belly and I would play guitar and sing and I would talk to her in her belly. I wanted her to know that there was someone outside of her mother waiting for her. Even though I was scared, even though I wasn't ready because she was coming, ready or not. And when she was born, lying there under that little heat lamp in the middle of winter and in a hospital, she was cold because she was used to being inside of a warm body. But when she heard my voice, she stopped crying. Because even though all these physical sensations were new to her, she heard something that was familiar. Brothers and sisters, I want to testify to you that this is the experience that we have when we come to Jesus Christ, when we listen to the Holy Ghost. We're in the middle of our trials. Everything's falling apart. We don't have any hope left. But we listen for that still, small voice. And we recognize it because it's the voice that we knew before we came here. It's a familiar voice, a familiar feeling from the pre-mortal world. As a father, it's been interesting. It's been difficult. It's been fun. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to be Joseph and Mary trying to raise the Son of God. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to 
give birth to a baby and then however long it takes, days, weeks, maybe years, for various travelers to show up with gifts like the various wise men or the shepherds or anyone else that saw the star and knew this is someone special. It's my prayer that this holiday season and all year round that you will feel the joy of Jesus Christ in your life, of knowing him, that he is real. Building your connection with the Holy Spirit, the first comforter, growing grace by grace until you're ready to receive the second comforter. I love God. I love Jesus very, very much. He is my very best friend. He gives me joy and hope and peace and helps me to feel love when I'm at my lowest. It is my prayer that you will feel of his joy. You will partake of his joy and his goodness by following his commandments to love one another, to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, to be the peacemakers we've been called to be, to have hope when the world tries to give us hopelessness, to help fight this battle against loneliness and despair. That's my message for you. And I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to partake of the sacrament of communion. I'm going to play our communion message. And then Christine is going to offer both prayers. And then there'll be an opportunity for you to pause the video and partake of the sacrament. If you don't have bread and wine or water ready, please pause the video and go get it now. This is a wonderful opportunity to partake of the sacrament, to partake of this sacrament as a fellowship so that we can have joy, peace, love, and hope together in Christ. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today, for worshiping with us in this holiday season. If you like this video, please remember to like it, to subscribe to the channel, to share the video so we can let others know about the joy, peace, love, and hope that is Jesus Christ. I'm now going to offer a closing prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time. Thank you for this opportunity you've given us to worship together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to partake of the sacraments together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
to feel thy Holy Spirit in our lives. I pray that all those that are seeking will find your hope, your light, your life in Jesus, whether it be here in the fellowship or elsewhere. We ask you to please help us, bless us as we are building this young movement. Send us those that need us and send us those that we need. We ask you to please bless all those this holiday season. Help keep us warm, safe, comforted, and help us to find contentment with the things that we are blessed with. Help us to see the blessings in your life. Help us to see the blessings in our lives that you've given us. Help us to see past the fear, doubt, and hopelessness and despair that the world tries to project upon us. And focus instead on the innocence of the birth of Jesus Christ. The Torah that he lived as he taught us in his life. His humility in dying upon the cross after partaking our sins in Gethsemane. And the hope in the resurrection and the second coming. Please bless us with your spirit. Help us to know you better through building our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Help prepare us to be the prophetic people you've called us to be. Help us to learn and grow, see and know things as you wish them to be understood. We thank you for the modern technology you've given us and all the blessings you've given us that would allow us to share your gospel here online so that we can worship together in saints wherever we are. And please place a special blessing on those that are suffering from spiritual PTSD, spiritual homelessness, spiritual trauma. Help all of us to grow together past this as one in the name of your Son. Help us to be here in the fellowship, the safe space, the safe place that these people need us to be so that they can come and partake of your Spirit. It is my prayer that to call forth all those that are seeking that they will find who will partake in the goodness of your Son, the goodness of God, and feel the power of the Holy Spirit in the atonement, coursing through them and healing them from the things that this world would use to break us. We thank you for all your blessings, and we pray these things to thee humbly. In the name of thy beloved Son, even Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen.